and welcome to this video series so in this video we are going to discuss 10 questions first 10 questions from the subject which is UGC net paper 1 and this topic the chapter name is information and communication theory now if you are from computer science discipline I feel this you are not going to face any kind of difficulty in solving these kind of questions but the students who are not from computer science discipline then uh, it is better for you to look at all these videos because they are going to really help you out in solving the qu questions in the real examination hall now for the computer science students, I have already uploaded the PDF file for these questions. Now you can just go through them, look at the questions which you cannot solve and go back, come back to these videos and try to solve these questions. Okay. So we have the question number one, the saying the octal number system consists of the following symbols. See we have different type of number system. We can have a unary number system, we can have a binary number system, we can have a ternary number system, we can have octal number system the same way, octal number system then we have uh, decimal number system we have hexadecimal number system and so on so there can be a number of number systems now in case of unary number system the base of the number system is one that means we are going to have only one symbol in case of binary number system we are going to have two symbols that is zero and one in ternary number system we have three symbols that is zero one and two in octal number system we have eight symbols that is zero one two three four five six seven these are total eight symbols now in decimal number system we have total 10 system symbols which are 0 to 9 and in hexadecimal number system we have total 16 symbols which are 0 to 9 and then A, B, C, D, E and F. Now they are asking the question about the octal number system as you can see in the octal number system we have numbers between 0 to 7. So the correct answer to this problem is option number C. Now let us look at the next question. They are saying the number of bits that makes one nibble. See when we say about nibble, nibble means it is a combination of 4 bits, right? So we have 1 bit, we have 4 bits that creates a nibble and when we have a total of 8 bits that create a byte. So they are asking about the nibble, therefore the answer is option number C. Now option number 3, they are saying the binary equivalent of this given number. So they are giving us a decimal number and now they are asking what is the binary equivalent of this number. So this number is 0 0.5625 with base 10. Now if you want to convert this number to binary, so you are going to multiply it with by 2. So we have 5625 multiplied by 2. Then uh, the multiplication of 5625 multiplied by 2, let me use a calculator here. So it is 0 0.5625 multiplied by 2 that is going to give us 1.125. Again from this, we are going to get this number as 1 okay now we are going to use this next number that is 0 0.125 and again if you are going to multiply it by 2 that is 0 0.250 again because we are going to take the first number that is 0 again 0 0.250 multiplied by 2 that is going to give us 0 0.50 again we are going to get the number 0 again 0 0.50 multiplied by 2 then you are going to get a number which is 1.00 now because we got a number which is 1.00, again you can multiply it by any number, you are always going to get 0, therefore this last digit is 1. So if you represent it in decimal number system, then you write it like this, that is 0 0.0.1001, okay, so like this. So the answer to this problem is option number B, which is saying that 0 0.1001 with base 2 is the binary equivalent of this given number. Now let us look at the next question. So here in the next question they are saying 1 MB is equivalent to which of the following. Now uh, we know that 8 bits create 1 byte. There is 2 raised to power 10 byte which is actually equivalent to 1024 bytes creates 1 kilobyte. Now you need to understand that when we write bit, bit is generally general represented by small b and when we write byte, byte is represented by capital B. So when I'm saying 2 raised to the power 24 byte, that means it is 1 kilobyte. And when I'm saying 2 raised to the power 10 kilobyte, that is equivalent to 1024 by, by, uh, kilobyte. It is equivalent to 1024 kilobyte. Then that is equivalent to 1 megabyte. And 1024 megabyte is equivalent to 1 gigabyte. So whenever I'm writing 1024 interchangeably, I can also write 2 raised to the power 10 and 2 raised to the power 10 gigabyte is equivalent to 1 terabyte. Now they are asking 1 megabyte is equivalent to, so 1 megabyte is equivalent to 1024 kilobyte. 
In the next question, they are saying the hexadecimal equivalent of this given number. So the number that they are giving is 0 0.3 with base 10. The best way to convert this number to hexadecimal is convert it to decimal and then convert the decimal number to a hexadecimal number. So just for simplicity, let me take more space and uh, explain it to you properly because I feel this question is going to be long. We have 0 0.3 with base 10. Now we'll start it start it by multiplying by 2. So we have 0 0.3 multiplied by 2. You are going to get 0 0.6. And the first number that you are going to get first digit is 0. Then we have 0 0.6 multiplied by 2. Then we are going to get 1.2. So the second digit that we are going to get is 1. See why I'm doing this? Just go through my lectures of number system, then you will be able to understand. When we have 0 0.2 multiplied by 2, then it is 0 0.4. So we are going to take the number 1, 0, 0 sorry. When 0 0.4 multiplied by 2, we are going to get 0 0.8. Therefore, again, we are going to take the number as 0. 0 0.8 multiplied by 2, we are going to get 1.6. Again, we are going to take the number 1. Then 0 0.6 multiplied by 2, again, we are going to get 1.2. So this is again 1. Then we have 0 0.2 multiplied by 2, that is 0 0.4, again 0 and 0 0.4 multiplied by 2 that is we are going to get 0 0.8 again 0 and 0 0.8 multiplied by 2 again we are going to get 1.6 again 1 and this 1 point point 0 0.6 multiplied by 2 then you are going to get 1.2 again 1 and so on now you can see there's some pattern that is repeating itself that is the first thing is from here to here we are going to get unique numbers mm, we are getting unique numbers but this exact pattern from here to here, it, this exact pattern is also repeating itself here. And again, this exact pattern is also going to repeat itself here. That means 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, it is repeating. So if you can write this number in uh, binary number, then it will be, uh, you have to write it like this. So it is 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on. So this 0, 0, 1, 1 is actually showing this pattern. So it is... Uh, it is equivalent to this given number in binary. Now when you make a hexadecimal number out of it, hexadecimal number, that means we have to convert, combine four bits of information. Like these four bits of information is going to create one digit of hexadecimal number. It is going to create one bit of hexadecimal number. It is going to create one bit of hexadecimal number. It is going to create one bit of hexadecimal number and so on. So this digit in hexadecimal is representing a number four. It is representing a number 12. 12 means it is representing C. Again, it is representing C, it is representing C, it is representing C, and so on. Therefore, the hexadecimal equivalent to this number is 0 0.4 CCC, and so on. Base is 16, therefore, the answer is option number A, which is the correct answer for this given problem. Okay. Now, let us take the next problem. Here, they are saying uh, the integer binary number is positive and negative when the integer number is positive and negative. See, there are three ways of representing negative numbers in uh, computer science. Number one is we use sine bit representation. Second is we use one's complement representation. And third is we use two's complement representation. Now in case of sine bit representation, if the most significant bit MSB is one, that means the number is negative. If MSB is zero, that means the number is positive. Or you can say uh, there are two ways of writing it. Either you can say that if the most significant bit is zero, that means the number is positive, And most significant is one bit is one, then the number is negative. Now, for this particular case, if I say we have the number 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, because the most significant bit here, this most significant bit is 0, that means it is a positive number. And what is this number? So you can just convert this decimal number to a uh, binary number to a decimal number. Now, if the same number is represented like this, we have 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Now, because the most significant bit here is a uh, 1 therefore it is a negative number so if you convert this number by uh, this number from binary to decimal then it will be this one into 2 raised to the power 0 plus this is 2 raised to the power 2 or you can say this is 1 this is 4 uh, 8 this is 16 and this is 32 so it is 32 plus 16 it is 48 48 plus 5 that is equal to 53 so it is plus 53 and this is representing minus 53 as the number now here you can see option number C and D they are completely wrong because positive and negative number cannot be represented by same sign 
and option number A and B there's some kind of confusion but I'm just going to write option number A as a correct answer because 0 is representing a positive number 1 is representing a negative number and actually th uh, they have formulated the question uh, wrongly because uh, these two things uh, create a problem because they should have written that 0 represents positive or negative so they should have written it like this but I will say option number A is the correct answer for this given problem now if you see the question number 7 they are saying what is the correct or order of storage unit now we all we have already seen that for bit byte is greater than bit kilobyte is greater than uh, byte megabyte is greater than kilobyte gigabyte is greater than megabyte and terabyte is greater than gigabyte now for the first option it is completely wrong because megabyte is not greater than gigabyte the option number b is completely wrong because kilobyte is not greater than megabyte option number c is correct and option number d is completely wrong because uh, this megabyte is not greater than terabyte therefore the answer to this problem is option number c let us look at this question they are saying one kilobyte is equivalent to so we have already seen this problem so answer is 1024 never mistook it as 1000 so biggest problem is student take it as 10 raised to power 3 the kilo is not 10 raised to power 3 in computer science kilo means 2 raised to power 10 so the answer is option number A that is 1024 now this question number 9 I guess it is formulated wrongly because they should have written it like this it is 256k multiplied by 2 because it is not never it is 2 it is never 2 is 56 kb what does it mean that means you can represent the main memory like this main memory means ram so in the main memory uh, assuming that we have cells like this main memory is divided into cells and this is containing this every cell is containing some combination of bit that represents the word size and the total number of cells that can be there now here the first first symbol that is first number if I am saying 256k 256k is representing number of cells in the memory and 20 is representing number of bits in each cell in one cell now for example here the total number of cells are between 0 1 2 3 and so on if you count the total number of cells it means that there are 256k that is equivalent to 256 into 2 raised to power 10 cells which is again saying 2 raised to power 8 into 2 raised to power 10 which is 2 raised to power 18 cells and in every cell we are going to have 20 bits of information so here because this number is 20 so in every cell we are going to have 20 bit of information right and for this 2 raised to power 18 cell uh, we can give address to each and every cell by giving the address of a bit address of a cell by in, in terms of bits so there are we require 18 bits to represent the address of one cell therefore the, there are 18 address lines 18 address lines and because one cell is containing 20 bit therefore for every bit we are going to have 20 data lines so for this question the answer is 18 address line and 20 data lines is the correct answer option number a is wrong option number b is wrong for option number c is wrong option number d is wrong option number b is the correct answer now this is the question number 10 here so we'll discuss with question number 10 till I, I think we should discuss till question number 10 in this video so in the next video we'll start with the question number 11 so in the question number 10 they're saying that two's complement of the binary number is so the number is 11001 now to find the two's complement you first need to find the one's complement so one's complement of this number is 01100 how do you find the one's complement just invert each and every bit so convert 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 and then add one then you are going to get the two's complement so it is zero zero one 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 so this is the two's complement for this given number so the answer of this question is option number c which is two's complement okay now in the next video we'll take question number 11 till 20 so let us move on to the next video